Dylan Earls, and I'm currently a student at Full Sail University. The producer I want to talk about for this podcast is named Terry Date. He's not really well known, but he's well known to me because I grew up with a lot of his records like Soundgarden, Pantera, White Zombie, Deftones. They're like some of the stuff that he's done is just amazing. And he's still doing it with Bring Me the Horizon recently and then I just heard Bullet for my Valentine's gonna work with him, so I think it's a great offer. Hopefully I touch upon a lot of different things with him but because he there's not a lot of information on this guy but I think for what he's done and especially his body of work that you see online he's definitely worth talking about and I don't see him being talked about enough so let's begin shall we now Terry wasn't originally into music he was actually more into geology and he was studying at the University of Idaho with that major and a couple of guys came up to him and asked him could he record local bars and shows and Terry decided that maybe this is a better calling than geology so he started recording and he realized that he loved it so much that he dropped out of University of Idaho to study recording at the Eastern Washington University. But what Terry Day did, he kept honing his craft And it wasn't until, I think, around 84 or something when he discovered a band called Metal Church at a local bar, and he just decided, okay, you want to come record, you know? So that's that was the first credit he ever had was Metal Church's very first album. After the local success of that album, bands started coming to him like crazy. You had guys like um, Mother Love Bone and Soundgarden from the area coming to him. And it was, this is 89, this is before the grunge scene happened. But then a little band down in Texas actually, like, were trying to decide on what producer to pick. So they were going to go with either Max, they were going to get Max Norman, but they didn't. They got this unknown guy from Seattle to come produce their record. And that band was Pantera. And if it weren't for Cowboys from Hell and Vulgar Display, you know, Cowboys from Hell pretty much cemented the deal for Terry Date. He pretty much became, you know, just the call producer of the 90s. What I like about Terry Date's production style is that he basically lets the band be themselves. While they're writing and recording the, their songs, he's just there basically to help out and like add reverb and delay. It sounds typical for a lot of producers, but what you don't realize is a lot of producers like to control the band a little bit, and that's not really a great thing because if you have a vocalist like Chino Marino from the Deftones, who's a very stream of conscious um, writer, then it's not really gonna work. I mean, overall, I believe that Terry Date's signature mark is not really a mark at all. It's just about being invisible to the artists and just helping out when you need to, because there's so many other producers out there that just like to put their hands in the money pit and not give the artist a say. And I don't think it's right. I always believed, even as a producer, I believed it's the band's responsibility to create their sound and create their structure. I'm just the one helping out their stuff. And Terry Date's a good inspiration for that because he'd done all my favorite records growing up, like anything from, I mean, especially the ones I haven't mentioned, like like Limp Bizkit and the first Incubus album. I mean, (laughs) I I wish I could say more about this guy, but I don't know if I have a five-minute time limit or not, but thanks, guys. Hopefully I tried to impart some knowledge into you. Hope you have a good day. (laughs)